Just under a year ago, the Besançon family found out their unborn baby boy would have Down syndrome. You've got a living baby inside you. As far as I'm concerned, that's, that's that. Even with the minute we conceived him, we were parents. Many babies diagnosed in utero as having Down syndrome don't get this far. But Janine and Chris have chosen to go ahead with their pregnancy. Statistics show that 90% of parents terminate the pregnancy when they find out the baby has the chromosomal disorder. Dylan is the couple's third child. They already have a son, Brandon, five, and a daughter, Paige, who's three. This little boy is already part of their family, and there are no second thoughts. You know, he's my baby, and yeah, it's gonna be tough times. Mm -hmm. I know that, but you know what? He's our baby and he's a little human being mm. and he deserves to be here just as much as you and I do. Three days after Dylan's birth, he and his mother Janine are at North Shore Hospital. Hey! <laughs> How are you? Excellent. Dylan is in the special care baby unit while Janine is recovering from a caesarean. How's the pain? It's OK, yeah. I'm just a bit of stomach pain now and that, but um, it's healing really well. And how's Dylan? He's good. Yeah? Yeah, no, he's great. Um, he's been on um, oxygen, mm -hmm. but he, he's slowly coming down off the oxygen mm -hmm. and that, and he's out of his incubator. Dylan staged an early and dramatic arrival. His heart rate plummeted right down, and they're very concerned about that. Best not wait till Monday, best to get him out today. 40% of babies with Down syndrome are born with heart defects. Janine is rushed into emergency surgery. Dylan's heart is beginning to fail. It's urgent he be delivered immediately. Dylan's made it. He's alive, but not well. At just 1.8 kilograms, he's well below the weight of a full-term baby. He's very conscious. Overwhelming. It just takes a, takes a breath and you words away and doing well. Blowing away. He's absolutely beautiful. Okay. Basically, they decided, oh, there's no point in carrying a risk for an extra three days of term, so they decided to take him out. And I'd say probably within two hours of that decision, he was out. He's rushed to the special care unit and immediately goes on oxygen. He looks like a dollar, Daddy. Yeah, he does, he does, that's wow. right. Oh, he's going, give me a cuddle, Daddy. Pretty handsome. Thank you. <laughs> Janine's first contact with her baby boy is through the window of an incubator. She desperately wants to hold him, but can only touch him with one hand. Looking at him, just wouldn't think he would have Down syndrome. I just want him in my arms. <laughs> It's really hard to accept that he's in there. Dylan's stay in the incubator is indefinite, so it could be 48 hours or it could be a week. Right now he's just made me a better person. He really has. He's just taught me so much. I was very anxious before he was born. I just kept saying, oh, I hope he's okay, I hope he's okay. I hope this baby's gonna 
get through this because it, you know you just that is your main concern at the time and then he came out and they said look he's looking fine as soon as I heard that my emotions just oh my goodness my little boy he's here it's been a really tough emotional just love him so much he's my baby Oh, I know. I just want him to be all good. Janine's not been able to have much physical contact with Dylan. I think not having him next to me has been really hard. Um, I'm really pleased with his progress, but, you know, at the end of the day, he's not with me, and it's I'm finding that really difficult. And I have tearful moments, mm. but the tearful moments aren't the fact that he's... Um, a baby with Down syndrome. It's not about that mm -hmm. now. It's just, I just hope my little baby's going to be really well and I just love him so much. Mm -hmm. He's just, I'm in love with him. <laughs> Many babies with Down syndrome struggle to breastfeed. Low muscle tone means they don't have the strength for suckling. Gaining weight will help boost Dylan's overall condition. He's using a lot of energy just to pump blood through his body. Janine's put herself on call, around the clock, to be there whenever Dylan needs her. I know that little babies with Down syndrome can have problems with latching on and mm -hmm. breastfeeding because of their low muscle tone. Mm -hmm. It's a long process, this breastfeeding. And it's mm -hmm. going to be very time consuming at home with the other kids. But Dylan is seriously ill. Janine knew from scans that he had a hole in his heart. His condition is much worse than anyone predicted. One of the valves of his heart is leaking and his lungs are filling up with fluid. Surgeons had planned to wait until he was stronger at three months old. But Dylan won't make it that far unless they operate now. Chris and I both feel that he's in the best capable hands and that it's not that side of it. I, I really don't have any fear, but it's just the fact that he's going through it. You know, he's only so little and I just wish he just didn't have that. Baby. Breaks my heart. At just 10 days old, Dylan undergoes surgery. No one needs to remind Janine and Chris that undergoing open heart surgery is serious stuff. Little baby Dylan is having his open heart surgery today. It had to be done sooner. I'm sitting here anxiously waiting for a phone call. While Dylan's brother and sister play, the couple are on tender hooks. It's just so hard sitting here waiting. That's his little head he had on just before he came in. He went into surgery. I cannot tell you the amount of stress it's put on both of us, but and we handle it differently. I, I tend to go a little bit numb on it with my feelings and emotions on the outside and I'm blowing my eyes out on the inside. Um, my wife, she's a lot more uh, physically emotional um, initially, but uh, as I've seen in our, in our past as well, she always comes out twice as strong and then I, six months later, it'll catch up and get me. Yeah, it's definitely been a, a bit of a whirlwind. So it feels like I'm having trouble getting my feet on the ground. Dylan's operation will take almost six hours. He's on a heart bypass machine for much of that time. His heart is stopped while the surgeons repair his leaky valve. They wait to hear that Dylan's heart has successfully been restarted. Janine just got the call from the surgery team just to let us know that he's off bypass now. So his heart's doing his own thing. So such a big emotional relief for Such a big emotion to leave for all of us, especially my wife. So, yeah, it's been still a weight coming off. Dylan is not in the clear yet, but the worst is over. Dylan will spend six more weeks in hospital to ensure the surgery has been a success. In that time, he battles several infections. Janine remains at his side while Chris and the kids live at their North Shore home. It's a separation that impacts on the whole family.
mother and baby finally come home. He's just a, a miracle little baby as far as we're concerned. He's, he's so precious and gentle and, you know, he's, he's our angel. Do you have a good nose? Come here. Kim Wine, darling. Hi. Hello. Hi. Looking for some food. Oh, yes. Little pickle. That's what we call you. Yeah? Pickle. I was away from my family for six weeks. I felt very, very torn. I wanted to be here with my family and my children, my husband. Um, but I wanted, I had to be there with Dylan. I wanted to be, but I also had to be there for baby Dylan. That was horrible, seeing your family just walk away and wave goodbye. And I had to stay in this little box. The bond has been incredible between us. I mean, I'm bonded to my other children too. Gosh, don't get me wrong, but there's a different kind of thing happening is in there. Just him and I for six weeks, I used to just hold his hand for hours and hours. You know, just, that's all I did. The weeks apart have taken a toll on family routines. Chris is working and facing more of a load at home. Even though I knew I had to just keep it as normal as possible, I didn't realise till pr probably about the second or third week away that I, I actually had, had it affected my sleep. You know, I, um, my sleep got shorter and more. And I started waking up again in the middle of the night and that. So I think it was more a subconscious thing for me. It had really started to eat me from the inside that you know, we weren't a complete family and that. Three-year-old Paige has missed her mum. And she's been waking with night terrors. Paige, do you want to come and do his buttons up like you do? Bye, yeah. Come on then. Come on. Yeah, that's your job, isn't it, Paige? Yeah. Paige is happy that Mum's home, but she's aware this new baby is taking big chunks out of Janine's time. You love your brother, eh, Paige? Like most newborns, Dylan needs a lot of his mother's attention, and Janine is juggling everyone's needs no, 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 no. with a baby who's been very unwell. Excuse me. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you snacking my bum for? It's a rare day when the whole family are at home together. Would you ladies like a cup of tea or a coffee? Yes, please. Yes, please. Dylan's the most important at the moment, so, yeah. And with Dylan's situation, he's very bonded after six weeks of being in hospital to Janine, so there's not really a lot I can do, you know? All I can do is um, make cups of tea and clean up after myself and look after the other kids and that. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. It's been a roller coaster ride. I would look back and I weigh the whole thing up. I, you know, I wouldn't have any other way. I'd still do it exactly the same. Yes. It's been a strain on Janine and myself being apart, and she's she's had some tough times in the hospital, but she's been an island in, in herself. She's a brilliant mum. No term. Eight-week-old Dylan is back at Auckland Starship Hospital for a checkup following his surgery. We were at the hospital to check on his heart. They just wanted to check and make sure his little heart was working really well and that it was yeah, doing everything that it should be. It out the electrical signal from the heart. Yeah. Okay. He had one valve up the top, it was just completely one, so they had to actually make two Incredible on a heart like that size. Unbelievable. Okay, all done. All good? Yep. So all there is to it. Yeah. So I'll give this to the doctor. Oh. Right, okay. They, they were checking the lungs because when Dylan was little baby baby, uh, they weren't good. They were pretty much collapsing, to be honest. You know, everything's connected. And his little heart wasn't working right, so his lungs weren't working right, and he was just deep breathing. It was just... 
horrible to see. It was awful. Dylan undergoes two hours of tests before an assessment from the cardiologist. Is he getting extra calories? Yep, he's on um, calogen as uh -huh. well. Good. Is he happy with his weight gain? Yeah, I reckon it's great because he's he was 2.5 when he um, left hospital. Yep. So yeah, he's put on 120 grams a week or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's good. Okay, let's pop him up here. Okay. His heart, although it's fixed, that's still a concern of mine. I still think, oh my goodness, he's had a total repair of his heart. You know, a huge repair. I just think all the time, that, oh my gosh, I hope it's okay, you know. To be honest, the Down syndrome's actually really nothing to me. It's the oh. heart that really has been a huge concern. The x-ray looks good. Cool. ECG looks fine, the baby's growing well. Awesome. So um, why don't we catch up with you again in about four or five months' time? Yeah. Okay. That's really good news. It is, yeah. Probably 10% of kids with this sort of thing need to have something else done. Yeah, you said that. But there's certainly nothing else going on that's cool. at the moment. Knowing that your little boy has come through the other side is just amazing. Oh, what did I do? Put on weight. Please put on weight. When we next catch up with the Bazonson family, Dylan is three months old. 3.82, yes. and we were 3.75 last time. So that's. That was only on Monday. Yeah. So that's what's that? Good. That's uh, 70 grams. That's great, good isn't boy. it? Is that good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have 20 grams a day, so it's easily. So that's. Gaining more than that. Yes. I'm <laughs> doing that. Janine is extremely proud. Dylan is bouncing back, steadily growing and gaining weight. However, she rarely leaves the house unless it's for a medical appointment, and there are many. There's a roll call of visitors to the house as well. The occupational therapist, dietitian, and social worker. Today, it's the community nurse checking on his growth and progress. Oh, darling. There's a lot of support wrapped around this baby, but at times the family feels swamped. You know, you've got all these people around you. When Dylan first came home from the hospital, there were people in here all the time. Janine's friend, Alison, gave birth to her daughter, Jessica, just one week after Dylan. It's also Alison's third child. Children with Down syndrome have delays around development milestones. Jessica, where's Dylan? So how big's Jessica? She's just Janine's always known that will be the case. But looking at her friend's baby, she feels some sadness. She holds her head up so tickle. well, eh? She does. Dylan doesn't... Like, his head's very floppy still. He's really good now. He's better than what he was. And, you know, the giggling and laughing there. He smiles and he yeah. does a little bit of a giggle and he's finding his... Oh, yes. He's finding his voice. Yeah. But Jessica's so much more advanced. But he will. He will do all of those things. Just a little bit He'll just do them slower. Oh, you're darling, you're beautiful. I see past today, you know what I mean? I see... You know, next week will be better, and then Dylan's getting bigger and stronger, so we'll be able to go out more. It's the way it is, and I wouldn't change anything, what's happened for anything now. But it, it's still, I'm only human. I do have my moments of crashing. Yeah. Hey, baby boy. Dylan does need more care than Janine's previous two babies. Daddy. He's taken to breastfeeding, but Dylan still needs to be topped up by a feeding tube. Well, you've got to check these out. That's your feet. There's your little feet on there. See that? The family's the... hired a nanny to help look after Brandon and Paige so Janine can manage Dylan. Ah. Oh, wait a minute, darling. And up. What I'm doing here is trying to strengthen up baby Dylan's neck because um, his muscle tone is not as good as um, what other babies' muscle tone in their neck is, so you've got to strengthen their necks. Chris is working long hours at his tattoo studio. Is it hard for you being away from home so much? Yes and no. I mean, I know it doesn't sound very good, but, you know, I kind of... I hide in my work sometimes. That can be a good thing, you know. The, the hardest thing in the whole experience has been the separation. So when Janine and Dylan were in the hospital and the stress of his heart operation and then that long time separation with, um, with my wife and, and Dylan, um, that, that caused a lot of strain. 
it was, you know, it just emotionally it just tore me up. Just felt a bit lost there for a while. Don't you have a good day at school today, babe? Not the best. I know you love being at home, darling. No. But you know what? School's really important. It teaches you lots of amazing things. <coughs> and you'll grow up and you can be a banker like you want to. <coughs> Chris is doing the best he can, you know, for the situation. You know, he's providing for his family, and for that, I just thank him so much. You know, he's just he's doing the best he can. He gets tired. Um, it's a bit of a strain on our relationship sometimes, which is, you know, hard. But we're a strong couple, and we will get through it. It's not it's not a problem. So tell me, are you worried about Janine? Oh yes, I am. Yeah, I am. I'm. Um... I'm equally worried about us. Does he end up getting kind of like the bulk of your attention? Oh, totally. Totally at the moment, yeah. Dylan was, he was a lot harder to deal with than, you know, babies that don't have Down syndrome. You know, like I had to tube feed him. I was in hospital for six weeks. You know, that's a huge thing to your relationship. Six weeks apart is a long time. You know, you do kind of disconnect a little bit. As the months pass, Chris and Janine's relationship reaches crisis point. They've started seeing a counsellor. I think we're still in a pothole with our relationship, yeah. to be honest, to be frank. With us, when it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's really, it feels like it's really bad. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably get a little bit short with Janine when it comes to ongoing issues time and time and time again. I just, you know, I think if the subject's being thrashed and we have a difference of opinion, then it's probably less said is better. Janine, I'm aware that you're really sort of feeling a bit yeah. sad. Yeah. I'm not coping very well. I'm not coping very well. No. I just feel really angry. I feel really sad. I feel really scared. I feel really alone. Mm. And I'm like, oh, why do I feel like this? You know, I was hoping this wouldn't mm. happen again, and it has, and I just... Mm. You know, I just I feel like I've, I'm not Janine anymore at the moment. Right, you've lost that sense of who you are. It's just... It's, with this time, it's so much deeper. Both of us, I think, yeah. I think have probably had a bit of depression. Yeah. And then I think the whole family's kind of paid a bit of a bit of a price. The most immediate and effective relief that we need is good quality sleep. Yes. That's, that's what I feel. The sleep deprivation and the depression is an external factor, which have really got nothing to do with the, the really good stuff that is yeah. happening in your relationship. Yeah. So I think it's really important to put that in context, that this mm. is something that you can actually conquer and you can actually get through. That's right, they're just spanners in the works. You know, I'm optimistic and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I did, you know, it's the only option I want. Um, you know, we're a family and I love my wife and yeah, don't really want another choice. We always come out strong, Chris and I. We might have these really yucky little patches for a little while, then we'll, we'll be fine. And then we'll have another little yucky patch, and we'll be fine. Just need to support each other. So has it been the impact of having Dylan and his Down syndrome that's got you guys to this point? <laughs> to be honest with you, it means nothing to me, that. It, it, I mean, maybe I say that now, maybe I'll change my mind later on, I don't know. But he is just delicious. And I don't even think about the Down syndrome. I mean, I still go onto Upside Down's website and I know he's got Down syndrome. I'm not in denial or anything. I just, doesn't worry me. It doesn't worry me. Dylan is Dylan. I wouldn't have him any other way. In the future, though, what do you think are going to be some of the issues with Dylan's Down syndrome? Kids can be cruel. You know, I just hope that he... I'm just going to get... Chris and I will just put so much positive stuff into him and he'll just hopefully just look at those people and just show them his hand, you know? Because we're just going to give him the best positiveness that you could give your child because Dylan deserves that, you know? He's a great baby and I'm sure he's going to grow up to be a fantastic kid and Mummy and Daddy will always be there. One month on, and Janine and Chris are determined to confront the issues facing their young family. Dylan continues to thrive.